Okay, welcome everybody. Our presenter today is Joel Ben, one of our AMS employees, who will be going through the latest release from Research Data Australia, so release 11. How do you? Excellent. Thank you again. Um, welcome everybody. Thanks for coming along. Um, today's presentation is going through release 11. We put out last month. The it's going to be quite a short presentation just because a lot of the um, stuff that was in, in the release was behind the scenes um, and also for AMS staff. Um, so the first thing I'll go through is uh, the RIVCS changes that happen once a year. Um, so these are structural changes to the RIVCS schema. As some of you will know, we, we have a RIVCS advisory board. Um, proposals that come in basically get logged with the, the RAB, the RIVCS um, advisory board. And then once a year, they'll approve certain changes that we'll implement um, towards the end of the year, which we did in November. Um, so I'll just go through that. There are only minor changes to the schema um, as part of it for this year. Um, so on the ANS website, uh, under technical resources, you'll see the RIVCS schema uh, menu item. So the documentation here has been updated um, for RIVCS 1.5, which is the latest version. Um, so all the schema guidelines, uh, the overview documents and things have all been updated. I'll just jump into the guidelines just to give you a, a quick visual of what's actually changed in the, in the schema itself. So if I scroll down to the diagram, just zoom in hopefully everyone can see that okay um, so what's actually changed in the in the schema for this uh, this year has been the, in the related info element itself so the related info element is um, used to relate to things that um, obviously relate to the collections or parties services activities um, that you're providing so as part of this release what we've done is we've added the relation element um, as a sub element to related info um, as some of you will be aware that the relation element um, is an existing element um, and it has been in related object for quite some time now. So the enhancements to related info uh, give us two things. Um, the first one is we can now provide richer relationships between related info um, existing object types. So those are websites, publications, metadata, data reuse um, and data quality. So we can now describe the relationships between a collection and, and those entities itself. Um, and then the other aspect is um, what has changed in, in this release is you can actually use related info to relate to collections, parties and services via an identifier. Um, in the past, we've had people that wanted to relate to um, classes or collections in other people's data sources, but they didn't necessarily know what the key would be. Um, but they knew what, say, the DOI or the handle or, or, or unique identifier for that collection would be. Um, so this basically allows us to relate to another collection via an identifier or another pub publication via its identifier and also describe a rich relation between the two. Um, so that's really the only structural change um, for this release. Um, oh, sorry. The other thing that has changed is the identifier has been changed from just a single um, entry to multiple entries being allowed. So you may have a DOI, a handle, and a URL for a collection that you can actually describe in, in here. Um, the other changes that were taking place were all in the vocabs for RIVCS. Um, so they were uh, vocabs to support the changes in the related info. So um, in the related info types now, there's obviously collection party services and activities. Um, and obviously, we've also added some relations um, to, to describe richer relationships between collections and publications. So we can now do things like is cited by uh, all supplements. So if I just go back into the RIVCS page, and I'll open up the controlled vocabs. Let's scroll down. Everyone can see OK. And you'll see there's now a section for collection relation type for publications. Um, and this is obviously only for use with related information. Um, and when you're entering a collection record and you're relating it to a publication, you now have these uh, relationships available. There were some changes to the identifiers vocabulary as well, just to support those richer relationships. Um, we now have the M NHMRC identifier, so we can relate to activity records um, or grants that are they're under activity records on the NHMRC. Um, in the related information type, as I said, there's now activity collection, um, party and service, which are existing classes in, in RIVCS. 
And again, to the related information identifier types, uh, we've basically added um, existing ones from the normal identifier type uh, <coughs> vocabulary and also uh, extra ones to support richer relationships uh, between the objects. So what I'll do now is I'll just jump over into the, the registry itself. Um, so I'm just in, in the demonstration environment um, to start with, and I'll just show you a quick example in the, in the ad registry screens um, of how these changes have been implemented. So if I just add a new record, I might zoom in a little bit just so it's a bit easier to see. So I'll just quickly add a collection. But just go into the related info tab there. You'll see, uh, well, if you've known this tab previously, you'll notice that the change is there is an add relation button um, and an add identifier button where previously there was just a field for add identifier because we can now obviously add multiple identifiers for a related object. If I click on the add relation, um, we'll obviously have the relation types that are available in all vocabs. Um, if you are using these screens, please note that there is a 16 um, item limit in the lists. So if the item that you're looking for isn't displayed, um, it's most likely that it's pushed down to the bottom of the list and isn't being displayed. So you can actually type um, the relationship that you're looking for and it'll filter the list for you. Um, so as you can see here, this is a new one for the relationship between a collection and a publication. Um, another thing to note on the screen is we've implemented the ORCID widget. Um, in this tab as well as the related objects tab, which we did in the previous release. So if I start to put in an ORCID identifier, I can actually, oh, I'm not showing, bear with me for two seconds. So I'm just switching environments to see if it would work in here as a better example. Okay. Um, sorry about that, a little bit of a hiccup in the other environment. Um, so you'll see when I start to enter an ORCID identifier, I actually get some options here. So I can look up an ORCID. So if I know the ORCID identifier itself, I can just enter it straight away and hit look up and that'll actually resolve the ORCID identifier to the person. Um, or I can actually use the search, uh, which searches ORCID directly. Um, so I'll just do a quick search called surname black. Um, and it'll give me a, a number of results. And when I select an item and it'll actually retrieve the information from ORCID itself. Um, so this is going to be really useful going forward if users um, or data providers don't actually want to provide party records for, for um, researchers, they can actually link directly via the related info um, to ORCID objects and we'll actually do some display stuff in, in RDA which I'll show you in a second. There's a question, sorry. Just to answer your question, Anne just asked if there is a list of available relationship types, um, which has changed for this release, and that is on the vocab page. So um, through RIVCS, um, technical resources, RIVCS schema, and then if you go into controlled vocabularies, um, they're all structured with the headings for the different um, vocab items, I guess. So the related information type is here, and the related identifier types are here. Um, so yeah, it is, it's not ideal in the screens at the moment um, and there is a change control in the backlog to actually fix those lists um, to make them a bit more user friendly and display everything or at least a scrollable list inside the drop down itself. Um, the only other thing to note uh, was just a slight vocab change for description. Um, you can actually now describe the lineage um, to do with the collection itself um, and that's really the only other vocab change um, that has been put in. Um, so going through the display stuff for RIFCS, um, I'll just jump over into RDA. So this uh, example here, uh, excuse my dummy data, um, it's a bit of rubbish in there. This is an example of where I've used the related information changes um, to relate to nearly all objects that you can relate to through related info. So you'll see over on the left hand side of the main section of the view page in RDA. Previously what we had there for related info was literally just a heading that said more information and we were just dumping the, the entered information underneath that title itself. As part of this release we've actually recognised the different subtypes in related info. 
Um, so you can see I've got a couple of related publications here where the DOI will actually link off to the publication itself or wherever the DOI results, I should say, um, and the notes about the related info itself. Um, underneath that, I have related websites, reuse information, data quality information, and additional metadata. Uh, the thing to note with the related info, if you have used the related info to relate to a um, what we class as a, a, a registry class, so a collection, a service, an activity, or a party, and you've at least given that um, that uh, relationship a title. So if I just flick back into the screen here. So if, if you've at least given that relation, related object a title, it will actually display in the connections box on the right hand side. So this my activity record which I've entered is a related information activity where I've actually provided an identifier, provided a title and I have the relationships filled out. And you'll see that there's two relationships here. So up the top we have this activity contains and also describes the collection which probably isn't uh, the correct use of the vocabulary. Um, but you can obviously have multiple relationships for those. Um, so that's for activities, parties, services, and collections. If they have a title, um, they will display in the connections box. If they don't have a title, but you provided an identifier which exists in, an, in another object within the registry, we'll actually go and fetch that uh, relationship for you and display it in, in the connections box. Um, so hopefully this is all making sense. If not, feel free to ask questions. So here's one where I have used related info. Um, it might be easier if I just show you the data in the background. It might make a bit more sense. So this is just looking in the registry at the same object. You can see that I've used related info. The type is an activity. I've given it a title. I've also given it an identifier. Now this identifier exists in an activity record which exists in Research Data Australia. I'll go to the right page. And so what we do is we go and pull back the relationship to that object in Roof CS or in RDI, I should say, and we display it like any other relationship that would be provided in the related object element in Roof CS itself. So you get the link to the record and the brief description or the first description that we can find for that object. Now you're probably wondering why there is multiple objects there when I just had the one related info, um, and this is because it's dummy data where each of these objects actually contain. Um, the identifier that I linked to. So you'll see here the arc that I was linking to by this collection is contained in all those activities. And that's fine and that's that's something that may happen if you're using, um, let's say you're entering a collection and you relate to a party record and you provide um, say an NLA identifier and we have multiple records with that NLA identifier, they'll all show up in the connections box and that's, that's not a bad thing because people will be able to link through and, and, and find different collections to, that are mapped to each of those um, party records in Research Data Australia. Another question, will the backlink from the activity display pointing to the collection? Good question. Um, yes, the internal and external links that you can set up in your data source account um, also work um, backwards or forwards as they do for a related object. Um, so I'm in the activity now and I should have a link back to the collection that I was just in which is use related info to, to do the relationship. Um, and as I said, the, the internal and external um, settings in your data source account will take into effect um, into account the, the related info um, relationships as well, just like it has in the past for related object. Okay, the, the other one that I did skip over um, is ORCID identifiers. So if you have used uh, the related info to link to an ORCID um, ID, um, so in this example, it's not, not a fantastic one because my ORCID profile is pretty limited. Um, but again, in the background, I'll show you the data behind this one. In related info, I've said it's a type of party. Um, I've given it a title, which isn't necessarily um, required for an ORCID um, because we do some special processing. I've then done a lookup um, for an ORCID ID, which is my, my own. Um, provided a relationship and just a little bit of a, a note for display. So what we do in Research Data Australia is when you actually click on the link for an ORCID party, which is shown in the connections box, we go and retrieve the information back about that um, ORCID um, object itself. So if I had some 
descriptions about myself in here, it would, it would show. And there's also obviously a link off, off to ORCID um, to view the ORCID profile in ORCID itself. Um, so I think that's going to be a, a really useful um, feature going forward. Um, we've had a lot of, I guess, issues in the past with um, party records being um, provided by different institutions for the same person. Um, and if we, we start using uh, unique identifiers and known identifiers for party records, we'll, we'll end up with, a, I think, a better um, mesh of relationships between collections and, and works, I guess entities themselves. Okay, so that's that's pretty much for it for the um, the formal RIVCS changes. Um, if there's no other questions, I'll move on to the next piece, um, which is experimental um, changes to the RIVCS, well, outside of the RIVCS schema, but it's acceptable to import and actually add um, these elements in into your records. Now, this is a, a trial project um, that's being managed out of uh, the ANS Melbourne office. So if you do want any information on it or you want to participate in it, um, do to just drop services at ANS uh, an email um, and they'll put you onto the right people. Um, so what it is, it's experimental display, um, support and display for links to data and the tools that can be used um, to, to work with that data itself. So in the past we have, you have been able to provide links directly to data via the location element in RIVCS. Um, but you couldn't really richly describe um, the object or the file itself um, through that location element. Um, so as a trial, um, what we're, we're sort of has been proposed is this structure that you can probably see on the screen now. Um, you'll note that there is XRIF. Um, there's probably not many of you who understand or, or know of XRIF um, unless you've been through the developer toolbox. Um, just a, a quick intro to XRIF, um, basically when your records are ingested as RIVCS into the registry, we actually convert them into uh, XRIF, which we use for um, the Display and Research Data Australia. And XRIF, um, what we do in the, in the conversion is actually we, we do things like we resolve um, subject codes, we go and find the relationships to the objects um, in your data source and we pull back literals and things uh, for those objects, which just makes our job easier at display time in Research Data Australia. So in the registry, if you're a super user, so someone in ANS, there's actually an option to show XRIF um, data itself. So this is sort of enriched RIVCS that we use in um, Research Data Australia just to make our lives easier to, um, to display relationships, um, literals for subjects, and also enhances the search. So um, if we didn't do this, uh, the conversion or the resolving of a related object, when you did a search for, a, so let's say, a researcher, um, you wouldn't actually find the collections that researcher is related to. By doing this, the, the researcher actually shows up as a related object um, in the XRIF itself, which is indexed um, for Research Data Australia. So it was a very speedy intro to XRIF, um, but basically the new annotation stuff, which is the trial, um, is part of the XRIF extension to RIVCS. So what, uh, what you can actually do is describe digital assets underneath the XRIF annotations um, element. So as you can see here, we have digital assets. So you can describe multiple digital assets. So for a collection that you've provided, you may have um, different files. So zip files, you may have it in different formats, um, uh, things like that. You can obviously, you can point to the URL for the file itself. Uh, so this is a directly accessible and public link to um, some data. You can describe the title for the data um, and then have the file name itself, uh, which may be different to the title, um, or the title is probably better for display in Research Data Australia. Um, you can describe the file size, um, which is helpful for people who are going to download it, maybe over a dial-up connection or something quite slow. Any notes about the data, so how to reuse the data, how to maybe some access or, or what tools um, are supporting the data itself. Now the last block down the bottom is the tool side of, of the data itself. So this is where people can describe the services or the tools that can be used with the data itself. Um, so the first element in supported by is the key. So that is uh, allowing users um, to point to registry objects uh, or services in the registry with a specific key, uh, which can be used with the data itself. Um, the one that's probably going to um, get more traction is the URS URL itself. So they're uh, a URL pointing to a tool that is hosted online somewhere uh, where the data itself is um, automatically loaded for the user when they click on that URL, or they can actually load the data somehow um, to the tool that's located at that URL. 
You can also provide a title and, and a logo um, for that service itself. And I'll show you what um, how these are used in Research Data Australia. Okay, so this is an example where the annotations has been used in the XRIF. Um, as I said, you can provide this uh, via harvest, um, via the import option in the data and in the dashboard. Um, and I'll also just show you quickly that you can actually provide this in um, the Ad Registry object screens as well. Now, as I said, though, it is a trial. So if you want to participate, you just need to email services at ans.org.au um, and they'll put you in touch with the, the Melbourne office who can um, assist you with any queries and, and talk you through um, supplying this information. Um, so in Research Data Australia, the, the first thing you'll notice is there is now a data heading over in the right hand column. Um, and this will provide links to all the, the URLs that you provided for the data um, in the annotation block. Um, so if I click this, this will obviously take me to the publicly accessible data, uh, which is just an XML um, that I uploaded on Dropbox itself. I also just give you the, the little format, which will helpful, be helpful if there's multiple versions um, or multiple formats, I should say, of the data itself. Um, and then when I, I said down the bottom, there was uh, obviously for the, the services or tools that can access the data, you can provide an image, and this is the image here. Um, you can also have obviously images for the, the data if it makes sense um, and also the title for the, the service or the tools itself um, and for this one I've just provided a URL which is an external entity um, which I just found a visualization for some I think it's um, Flickr data itself. Um, so you know once this gets traction I think if, if it gets formalized in RIPS yes it's going to be a great tool going forward um, to just provide that direct access to data where before it's a little bit, uh, I guess, obscure of how to access the data itself sometimes where you just have a URL under access, whereas this we can actually point to tools and describe the data in, in, a, in, a, ritual, in a ritual way. Um, so that was the experimental and, and trial support for the annotations and digital assets. For anybody that's interested in the data citation index, um, there were some changes in release 11. Um, anyone who's participating, you probably know um, uh, about those already um, and if you want any information on the data citation index uh, exports to Thomson Reuters um, again just email services at ANS and, the, and they can put you in touch with the right people. Um, the other the side note that I can't really show you at the moment um, in release 11 uh, we re-implemented the Twitter feed that comes out of Research Data Australia um, so in R10 a lot of you will know and, and it will have noticed that we basically rewrote Research Data Australia and the ORCA uh, ORCA registry um, and as part of doing so we sort of dropped off the Twitter feed that comes from Research Data Australia um, so as part of R11 that was re-implemented and on a weekly basis we basically provide a digest, a digest of um, any collections that have come through with specific ANZ um, FOR codes um, so if you are following you'll see on a weekly basis it'll come through and say something like 23 uh, collections were added under Earth Sciences or, or something similar. So that's been re-implemented for anybody that's interested. Um, site my data users. Um, there, there were obviously some changes in R11, um, nothing that can really be seen visual. Um, if you are a site my data user, there is now support for authentication with the service um, via a shared token. So in the past, site my data users would have actually have to register IP addresses. Um, which they then um, authenticate with so that the call or the mint um, request coming from a machine actually had to match the IP address that we had registered for the account. Um, as part of the release, we've implemented shared tokens. So each account will be given a, a shared token, which is just a unique 10-digit um, string that you can actually pass um, instead of the IP address of the machine and it will authenticate those users or, or machines. Um, the other slight change to the site my data service, um, we've had people in the past request obviously being able to mid production and test DOIs at the same time or in parallel, um, which was quite difficult via a single account. Um, so as part of this release, we've implemented a procedure where we're, we're giving people two separate accounts, one test account and one production account. And that just means that um, they can run those two in parallel. So they have a production system running and then if they're making any changes to their system, uh, they can obviously test that in parallel through their, their test account. Um, and again, if you have any queries and you haven't been given a shared token and you want one, uh, contact services and we'll be able to sort that out pretty quickly. Um, last but not least, 
some people may have noticed that the, the topics menu has disappeared from the top of Research Data Australia. Um, it's been rebranded themes. Um, and basically, as part of our 11, uh, we've implemented some functionality in the, in the ORCID registry at this point in time for and staff to be able to stand up pages or theme pages quite quickly, um, which if I just click on any of these, uh, urban water, um, the AND staff can obviously provide some descriptions quite easily. They can uh, upload images, which can be used in, in an image gallery. Um, and then obviously there's some search results that can be related to specific themes. And this is going to be, uh, I think, really useful going forward because uh, we obviously don't have to wait for releases to, to put new content into Research Data Australia. Um, and, and we can really highlight specific, um, I guess, collections um, and data sets that are in Research Data Australia. Um, going forward. Um, that's pretty much it for everything that's external. Um, as part of our 11, as I said, there's a lot in the background um, for and staff and also uh, just to, to enhance and, um, and speed things up in the, in the registry and research data as part of our 11. As I said, there is there's ample help um, via obviously services itself um, on the ANS website itself. Um, under the news and events, there's ANS services news. Um, so there's just a sort of little block about what uh, was implemented in service release 11. Um, and anybody that's in the registry itself, um, in the registry, uh, just on the dashboard in the registry, you'll also find um, information about what, what went out in the previous release and, and any older releases itself. Um, we are having one more service release for uh, this year, uh, which will go out next week. Um, but because there's been a really short time frame between R11 and what is going to be 11.1, um, it's really only minor bug fixes that we've had in the, in the system for some time just to clear up before the end of the year. Um, there'll be an announcement going out probably tomorrow about that release. Okay, well, that was quick and easy. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, drop a line or an email to services uh, at ANS um, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks all for attending.